What's up? What's up? What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Big Ben, and you're tuning into another episode of Let's Go to Church Gospel Show with Big Ben. So I need everybody to share, like, share to your uncles, your cousins, your, uh, your, just share. I need everybody to share. Please comment where you're from, because uh, I would like to connect with y'all. Uh, please comment. Uh, so we got a special guest for y'all tonight. I'm, I'm telling y'all right now. She's a legend. She's the lead vocalist of Lisa Knows and the Brown Singers. She's a two-time Stella Award uh, artist. We got the one and other, Lisa Knows Smith. Hi! <laughs> oh my gosh! Um, I'm over here shaking. Like I'm, I'm getting in famo. I, I need, I'm getting in famo. I'm sorry. <laughs> Now, you're going to have to come out of fan mode if we're going to do this interview. You're going to have to oh, come yes, out. Oh, yes, ma'am. Yeah, I'm going to come out. I'm going to go in and we'll come back out. <laughs> so we're just going to go ahead and go into the question. So let's talk about the little Lisa. Like, what oh, wow. made you want to sing? Like, why did you want to sing? First, I want to give the disclaimer to all of your viewers and uh, on your platform to you know, accept my apologies for being in my car. Um, so I hope that, you know, I have continuous good service and nothing happens but uh, I want everybody to be in prayer for the um, Williams family in Columbus Mississippi yes. is where I'm leaving from they had a fire on Saturday night over into Sunday morning and their family lost everything wow. um, so uh, we, we had scheduled this interview but you know things happened and I had to go and show my face um, to be in support and leave a seat offering um, for them that God would, you know, restore the, the, everything that they lost. So I, I believe in God to do it. So I had to say that first because I'm in my car and I, I don't want people to think I'm being disrespectful. So I, I apologize for that. But I started singing because I was born into a singing family. You know, my grandmother was singing. My mom was singing. My dad was playing the bass. So naturally, it was just easy for me to kind of want to do what I saw my family already doing. Um, I don't think I, I woke up one day and said, oh, I want to sing. It was just something that we did because my family was already doing it. So nine years old, I said, hey, I want to sing. My grandma was saying, well, you want to do what? And I was like, yeah, I want to sing. And they let me sing. And I've been singing almost now with the Brown Singers 30 years. This Ooh. year will make 30 years. Awesome. Yeah. Wow. 30 years is a big milestone. Right. Yes, ma'am. So when they, when they put, so at the age of 12, you was put into the lead vocalist for the Brown Singers. How was yeah. it like, because you know, in the court to industry, it was like, okay, well, she's young. How does she know how to leave the group da, 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 like that? So how was it like that? Um, You know, I think I kind of just did what I felt anyway. You know, a lot of people now have certain ways that they, they do things. Then we just sang. My grandmother was still very... Um, uh, very hands on with me. You know, she was the one that was making sure to get the crowd hype and right. she did all the talking. All she did was give me the mic and I would sing. So there was nothing that I had to learn how to do. I just did what I felt and sang uh, what God was giving me, giving me at the time. And I let God do the rest. You know what I'm saying? Right. It was, it was easy for me. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, that is a, that's amazing. A 12 year old leading a group. Like that's amazing. Oh my God. <laughs> I, I can't do it at 12. I couldn't do that at 12. I don't know why I did it, but you know, when I see my kids now, though, my kids, they have the same, you know, love for music and passion. My 12 year old, he ain't scared of nothing. If you give yes. him a mic, he going to shout and do it. And I'd be looking at him like, wow, you know, but I guess that's the same way people looked at me when I did it. So, you know, I just try to make sure that I encourage them to do what they feel and do what feels natural for them. And if that's music, music, sports, whatever, any arts, science, whatever it is, do what you feel and you feel like God is leading you to do. So, you know, yes. there we go. Yes. So many years later, uh, you recorded a song, Work On Me. So please tell us the process of writing that song. What's the meaning behind that song? Work on me was uh, I was 14 when I wrote that song. And honestly, you know, you go to church every Sunday. My grandfather is still a pastor and was a pastor at that time. And uh, he was preaching from Psalm 51 and 10, where David was saying, created me a clean heart. And the title of his sermon was work on me. And, um, you know, kind of 
learning how in life every situation is not gonna you know change you're gonna have to go through some stuff that may be uncomfortable but god can work on you that you can better do it and i was a little bit hood i'm from memphis you know what i'm saying so <laughs> pray for me um and i was trying to figure out how to be a teenager and 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 kind of juggle being in ministry because even though i wasn't a minister i was singing god's word and, and i was in the limelight you know so to speak right. so i gotta live a, a certain type of life i've got to be a certain type of way and right. i wanted to represent christ in a way that was not um you know uh was not a, a disappointment or shameful so i was like god you got to work on me because sometimes these people make me want to slap them sometimes these people make me want to you know and here we go here's this song where i share my feelings and my thoughts as a 14 year old and lo and behold so many people felt just like me <laughs> <laughs> yes right well, well the, the weird thing about it we both from tennessee because i'm from i live in tennessee so okay Yes, so we okay. both just did. So that's a good thing about that. We both just yes, did. yes. We country, we country down here. We country. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so you you were singing with the Brown singers, and you went on and sung with James Fortune. You toured with uh, many mainstream artists. How was that? Um, you know, it was it was fun you know for lack of a better word it was just kind of interesting and kind of fun to be outside of the family group because i got exposed uh, to so many different things you know different business and learning how to network and uh different environment and different churches and i got to go overseas and i got to sleep on a bus and, you know got to go on tour and you know all these different things that i experienced outside of my family group so i loved it and you know i learned a lot out on the road uh, one thing james always said to all of his singers he would say you know every good opportunity is not a god opportunity and uh, he wanted us to understand that you know sometimes things are going to come in your life but that it may not be god it, it may look good it may sound good it may you may think it's going to be good for you but but make sure it's not just good make sure it's god and um you know that that really helped me and uh you know kind of tr trying to excel in my career and excel in what you know i'm doing so hey i've enjoyed it i enjoyed me and james he's still my big brother uh and i i was afforded many opportunities from singing with him i've really really been blessed and i'm very very grateful yes i am yes so um Rika, can you put that question back up the fan one of the fan what is what was life like doing ministry and the music business with your family um you know i think i think there's a, a word that i think people need to understand when you're doing business with family and that word is respect i right. can honestly say that you know i was a younger generation three generational groups so it's my grandmother my mom and myself me being the younger part of that uh i was exposed to a lot more had a lot more information a lot more opportunities that were provided because of me and my grandmother and my mother and the brown singers respected that they respected that i you know could possibly know just a little bit more about um the industry than they they did so we we never had any fallouts you know because at one point the group was just the brown singers and i never forget i went to go uh do some work with vicky winans and i went to vicky winans house and she laughed she was like now who is the brown singers because your name lisa knows <laughs> and i was like wait the brown because she's like where the brown come from you know your name knows <laughs> and i was like well you're right you know my mom was a brown my grandmother was a brown and that's when at the time the group was formed they were browns so i came of course you know decade a decade later and here i am now you know knows and she said well i tell you what maybe you guys should change the name to lisa knows and the brown singers so that's how that came about in 2007 wow. um the group was formed in 1972 in 2007 they changed the name and put my name out front so you know they and i think my mom always knew that that I would kind of uh, expand and explore beyond the spectrum of quartet. So she says that, you know, that was to kind of set me up too. So, and, and kind of get some notoriety uh, along with my name. So, you know, we never had a problem. Managing um, business and family has always been a matter of respect. As long as you respect right. one another, you can get a lot accomplished. Yeah. Well, I, I can honestly say with some family businesses nowadays, they don't, they don't respect you know they were like okay yeah. i need this this is my money i want this percent i want this no you have to have respect and boundaries yeah. 
right you gotta right keep the differences like your cousin and then there's um yeah it's your cousin you got to keep that uh turn into business mode you know what i mean right. not like right i know you were family but we, this is business you gotta right you gotta do it like that so i completely understand i completely understand yes ma'am so now he went solo he did his first solo album and you uh-huh. did a whole bunch of great song great big god testimony and then my favorite jesus oh so please Lord. tell me the <laughs> process of writing that song and that song just takes me in every time i'm telling you so let me say this let me let me just go on it and mess you up real bad okay. jesus really is not a song like oh. Uh, it's actually a reprise to, I have a song called Jesus that I did. I did a live recording in 2019 and I I did a song called Jesus. And after that, it was more of a contemporary style song. I kind of, during the recording was like, you know, y'all know I sing quartet. So I got to have a little bit of quartet. So here we go. Y'all step out there. Then we go step out. Who I kept this moment, you know, and, and it just took off. It's just, it blew my mind because it's not a song, you know, like <laughs> we always said nothing but Jesus the whole time. But people everywhere we go, people want to hear it everywhere I am. They want to hear it. It's amazing to me. Um, so I, I didn't really write much. We just kind of added the little tag on it and it took off on its own. And I'm grateful. You know, God does what he wants to do when he want to do it. You know, he don't ask no permissions. <laughs> now, let, me, let, let me tell you. I play that song at work every single day. Wow. That song takes me in. Then with wow. the folks at work. All I have to do is call on Jesus. That's oh, it. That's all you got to do. Yes, ma'am. He going to take me <laughs> in again. <laughs> <laughs> so a fan had another question for you. What are pros? What are pros and cons of being a female in the quartet, quartet side of music business? Oh, wow. You know, quartet is a very male dominated genre of music. I think the cons are sometimes um, and with anything, I think we learn not just with music, but in corporate America and in sports and, you know, different things. We're just not treated the same. We have to work, you know, twice as hard to try to get and keep the respect of our counterparts um so that would be a con but a pro would absolutely be that you know being a female in this game um you have the opportunity to to show and display and showcase uh god you know right in the midst of where you feel like you're not being treated fairly you're not being treated equally you don't have the same opportunities um you know i think if you keep god first do the main make the main thing the main thing you can be successful and i and i believe that the brown singers and so many other uh female quartet groups have uh shown themselves to be successful to to the truth that's the williams sisters you know uh the i mean just countless caravan just uh, evelyn turnting ag just so many amazing female quartet artists have been able to um be successful in this genre when we just keep our head keep our head on straight keep the main thing the main thing and uh, do what god has called us to do yes you got so many hats so how do you balance all of this priorities yes i get asked that question all the time my priorities my first and main and and most important priority is my family my husband and my kids um and then everything else kind of falls in line under that i think god honors um everything that we try to do because we make sure that we keep the main thing the main thing i make sure that my house is good my family is good and then we pastor we you know we do the traveling and then the ministry we do the record label we do the all of all these different things that we do it comes behind my family because what good is it to be a public success and a private failure you know what i mean like what good is it to do all of that make have accomplish all of those things and then your family can't stand you oh no that ain't the way that ain't that ain't ain't the way we roll in 2022 i try to make sure that my husband is good my kids are good that they under understand and honor me for the woman that i am and as long as they're good then i can be good in other places and in other roles yes yes totally So since you mentioned your label, your record label, please tell us what made you want to come up with your own record label? Um, 
a few years ago, a while ago, uh, I was signed to a major record contract as, with a distribution deal. And because of that deal, I uh, was under the advice of my attorney, actually, at the time, said, you know, you, you should start a label. You should start your own, you know, company. And that way, you know, we can kind of get your business in order. And that's a word that I, I try to help everybody. Get your business in order. Get your business straight. Make sure that you're covered. Make sure that you have somebody that is looking out on your behalf for your finances, for your, you know, your assets, your just all. You got to make sure you got somebody looking out for you. So I started Evo World and um, really it was just going to be for myself. I was going to be involved with my own label um, and my own artist to uh, to sign and start helping other artists and um, that's what I've been doing and I get so much pleasure from helping other people. Absolutely. I might be going out. No, you good. I, I still I, heard you. Am I still there? I heard. You. Yes, okay. ma'am. I still heard right. you. I heard you. All right. I heard you. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so what are some uh, yes, ma'am. So what are some uh stuff that you have in your company that uh people can um go ahead and reach out to your company to be a part of? So we do marketing, we do vocal coaching, we do image consulting, we do um we do songwriting. We do just a little bit of everything. Production, uh, pretty much anything that you could do musically, we can be a part of it. We we set up photo shoots for people. We do uh, EPs. We we do the whole nine yards. You could do um, what we call collaborations, where we collab with the right. artists. They give us their ideas. They say, hey, you know, I like to do an EP. I want to do three songs. I don't know where to start. We take that and we start the process. We start, you know, we go through the songwriters course, help them write their songs. I do that. I write the songs with them. Um, I don't take any credit for it. I make sure that their songs are copyrighted. I make sure that they uh, are signed up with uh, PRO like BMI or ASCAP. Um, and then we go into the production stage. After the production is done, we set up a photo shoot, hire a stylist. We do the whole nine yards to give them the entire record label experience, even though they're not signed. You know, a lot of times, of course, it's a service, so they pay for it. But we we pull out. We don't we don't hold nothing back. We make sure that they get the entire experience and uh, make sure that they get, you know, what they deserve. And right. it's the quality of which they deserve. Yeah, you're right. Um, there is some record labors out there that don't do that as much as you're doing. Um, trying to set them up for success. They just be like, OK, they're a money pit. You know what I mean? Like, right, oh, I need right. this amount of money. Or I need this. Da, 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 da. They just not kingdom at all. Right. Right. I started this label from the artist's perspective for the artist, because I know what it's like to have nobody tell you nothing. You know, everything that, that we learned, we learned the hard way. So if I could do my part in helping somebody not have to go through any unnecessary, waste no money, go through no unnecessary changes and get it right the first time. That's something that we, we take pride in. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I support you. <laughs> so let me know. I support yeah, thank you. Thank you, Big Ben. Thank you, Big Ben. I appreciate you. Internship you. stuff going on. I would like to be a part. I do more. Yes, yes ma'am. So let me know. I'll Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and you, uh, you're a pastor. Oh my gosh, you got so many hats. So I know. The church. Um, we pastor, my husband and I pastor at, uh, in Anniston, Alabama, at the Life City Anniston, and um, it is a beautiful thing that we get a chance to do what God has called us to do um, in a way that brings him glory. I think, you know, for both of us, we really just want God to be pleased with our life, and we really want to to fulfill our purpose in life. A lot of people live, and they don't know what their purpose is, and they won't do what God has told them to do. They won't be obedient. They won't, They won't. you know, and that's not where we are in life. We want to just do. We understand that if you get the heart of God, you get the hand of God. If you get God's heart, if you do what he's called you to do and what he requires of you, then you get what's in his hand. Right. Uh, and what's in his hand is, you know, blessings. He, he And we don't do it for the blessings so don't get that part twisted we don't do it just for the blessings but that is the benefit of doing what god has called you to do so uh ultimately he be pleased he get the glory and um you know as long as he's satisfied i'm good so yeah. we enjoy we are enjoying it we just started pastoring um 
in January. So we are right in midways through when I think uh I think it's going well. Um, we, we're excited. It's a church where we love God, love people, and we live free. Yeah, oh, y'all heard us. You started to preach, guys. I felt it. I know. <laughs> I, I had to come back. My yeah. hand went up and everything. I yeah, had to preach your hand, you know. Yeah, you know? Well, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so I know for sure if I do come to Alabama, I'm going to come to your church. I'm going to be looking for you. Yes, ma'am. I will be coming. I'm only three okay. hours away. Okay. I'm going to be looking for you. Yes, ma'am. So you have a conference that you do annually, uh, Loving Me Again for Women. So please tell us about that. What made you start that? And please tell um, the people how the, the women of God, how to sign up and when's the next one? So I do it every year in September. I started in 2017. Um, and I started it because from the ages of 20 to 30, I realized I really didn't I didn't love myself like I, I should have. Um, and it was partially because I didn't really know myself. I got married at 32. And uh, by the time I got married, I realized that there were so many other women that had been through what I had been through. And they had the same testimony and story that I did. And I wanted to kind of get in a place with like-minded women and women who had experienced that and see how we could empower, support, love, and uh, encourage and motivate one another. And we did. We had over 200 and some ladies, over 300 ladies registered. And I think we had over 200 women present um, in Birmingham, Alabama. And I do it every year in September, the week before my birthday. My birthday is on September 29th. And I do it like the 24th. This year is going to be September 23rd and 24th of September in Alabama. So uh, we're super excited. Uh, we always have so many I mean, amazing things happen. Um, this is actually going to be my last year doing the women's retreat. So um, definitely, if you're interested, any woman, grab your sisters. Most people make it a girl's trip. We've had people to meet each other um, at the at the retreat and become the best of friends in every year they meet. Because uh, we've been to Little Rock, Atlanta, Birmingham. Um, you know, and we just we kind of go from place to place. But this year, we're going back to Birmingham. And uh, I'm just super, super, super excited about it. And this is the last. That's one. This is the finale year six because that is kind of shifting grace from season to season. I'm going to be doing something else, but uh, I'm excited. It's going to be real good. They can go to lovingmeagainretreat.com to get more information. Yeah, yeah, I better go there. I already got. I got. I got four. I got three sisters and a mother. They going I'm gonna try to get them to go there. I'm gonna try. To <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, tell them to come on. Yeah, yeah, I need to go ahead and travel down to wherever the location is going to be at. Yeah, be yeah. The, y'all. It's all over my Facebook page, all over my Instagram page. And, and again, like what I said, we got a website. So there's definitely more information there that they can get um, and kind of get the details. It's uh, four events over two days, and it's normally really, really good. Awesome. Awesome. You guys. So what is next for Lisa No Smith? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. I normally just do whatever God says, you know, seasons change. And I, unfortunately, I think a lot of people struggle with that. The fact that seasons right. change and you have to dress differently for every season. When, when, when winter time comes, you got to put your big coat on, you got to put your boots on, you got to put your hat on, you got to be covered uh, because of that season. And then, you know, the next season, spring, it rains. And, you know, so seasons are changing. I don't know exactly what God is going to do, but I'm open um, to whatever he does. Um, I just know that, like I said, that the season for that is over. I wrote a devotional. Me and my husband wrote a book. Yes. And I'm working on um, my my last book um, or my next book is going to be, the, it's called The Book of Recovery, Life After Recovery. And it's going to be my story, just what happened and what led me to this place. So I don't know what's next, but I, I just know that God is going to do something. And my mom is going to be doing music. We're, we've signed some artists, you know. Yes. Um, I, I don't know. I, I really don't know. Yeah, I know you sound some artists. I play some of your your artists on my stations. I do. Oh, so awesome. Here. Awesome. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. So, y'all know Lisa Knows and the Brown Singers have a new single that's out. Jesus, Jesus knows. knows. Yeah. So please tell <laughs> us about the process of writing that because I know you wrote it. I know. I can tell when you write it. Ah. Uh. Well, actually, it's an arrangement uh, because the words, nobody knows the trouble I've seen. 
you know, it's, it's nothing un, that, that's new. I just did a, a, an arrangement for it. And, um, you know, it came about in the midst of the pandemic. I was having a conversation with someone and I was saying, hey, you know, God is not surprised by what you're going through. Jesus knows. He knows everything, uh, everything that we could ever go through in life. He, he already knows he's not surprised. And so when I said that, I started arranging. Nobody knows the trouble I did. And I called my mom. And uh, I was talking to her on FaceTime, actually. And when I got to Jesus knows, Jesus, and she started crying. She went, I mean, she was like toe up on the phone. And I was like, you know what? That's the one. All right. I got it. Never mind, mama. <laughs> Go on and get, keep on giving them praise. And I hung the phone up and called the musicians like, we got to get on this. And um, here we are late. And, and it seems, you know, God is, he, he never ceases to amaze me because people all across the world now our love and Jesus knows. And I, I think it's more so um, the message than anything that is encouraging. And that's what I I was hoping that would, would, that that message would translate to the people that Jesus knows. He's not surprised. Everything you've been through, every up, every down, every win, every fail, God knows. And he Man. cares about you. Yeah. I'm telling y'all guys, y'all need to go ahead and download it. It going to take you in. You're going to be shouting from the other side of the room. He's going to shout all the way back down this way because I, I, <laughs> I'll be shouting on that song. I ain't, I ain't going to lie. So, uh, Ricky Post put up the uh, their single mm-hmm. cover up so people know where to um, put it up. Beautiful. It's beautiful. That's, oh, I like that. The red. Yeah, that's a beautiful. Yeah. That's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my yes, ma'am. So, um, okay, I was going to take it off. So, I that's all the questions I have for you tonight. I just want to, I just really want to thank you so much for coming on. Oh, Um, thank you. I appreciate you so much for having me, and I thank you for allowing me to be out of order in my car. But, uh, ministry goes on, and 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 I never miss an opportunity to try to be a blessing to somebody because ultimately that's what this life is about. Um, you know, God is love and we have to make sure that we're showing love to people and compassion to people, right. um, not just in their time of need, but at all times. Okay. So uh, I appreciate you. I thank you for taking the time. I love seeing all the comments, even though I'm driving and I really couldn't read them. I'm going to go back and watch after this is over. But uh, mm-hmm. thank you guys so much. I appreciate the love and the support. Please keep me lifted. Keep the Brown Singers lifted. And remember, Jesus no. My God, my God, guys, uh, I had so much fun. Um, I got this. Uh, I'm number one fan, everybody. Number one fan, Lisa knows and the Brown Singers. Number one fan, uh, guys, y'all make sure you support them on social media platforms. Um, but yeah, I am done for tonight. We're gonna play the outro and thank you, Miss Lisa, for coming on. Um, thank you to you. Yes, Thank ma'am. you. Good night, Hopefully everybody. We'll Have a nice day. Yes. You too.